Welcome to everybody again on my YouTube channel and today we will continue the setup and the integration of the Roland MV8800 production studio which is already updated with um, the Copperland interface um, and for me it's, it's also handy because I don't have to switch on my DAW system and this is really important for me because time to time I'm just jumping into my studio and I just switch on some kind of uh, some of my uh, instruments and I start to, to play with them and uh, of course uh, for those kind of uh, really quick uh, idea records I really I, I, I don't want to switch on my, my DAW system because it has boot time and I have to uh, type the password and I have to uh, start uh, my, my DAW software, what I choose, maybe Cubase, maybe Reason or whatever. So for me, now the, the Copperland with uh, the Roland MV8800, it's a really good solution because the Roland MV8800, it also has some kind of DAW kind of uh, sequencer inside. So it's capable to record and play back what I play on, on my master keyboards or it can really drive all of my uh, uh, time related uh, instruments or, or effects with, with, uh, with the time code. So I'm meaning um, not the, this display time code, I'm meaning the, the BPM uh, signatures. So let's jump now to the to the copperland setup because i want to show you guys what's the possibilities now <laughs> i get with uh, with this alessium alex uh, copperland interface in my roland mv8800 but before um I want to explain you guys uh, what other kind of uh, Copperland solution I have because of course the Copperland is not a solution for uh, a touch uh, real uh, instruments because it's it's uh, it's mainly a software solution on, on a network so it needs to be some kind of input and output and for that I choose from from the Alessium company the AL88C interface the AL88C interface, it has eight input and eight output uh, MIDI connector and with a really uh, small setup, you can really uh, integrate easily into your Copperland network. So, <laughs> because I have many synths and many uh, MIDI uh, uh, gear, uh, I have from this Alessium um, AL88C not one but two pieces. Now I want to show you guys this Alessium AL88C uh, interface where I installed and uh, how it looks uh, everything uh, when it's uh, connected. It's so simple because for example this is the GD800 and you see here I have uh, the two MIDI cable, one is the coming to the input and the other is coming to the output and all of my synth is, is uh, set up the same and all the cables it's coming uh, together to here and it's running blah 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 long 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 it's running up to up to here, Ta -da! and this is the Alessium Air 88C. It's very simple. You have eight MIDI input ports and eight uh, MIDI output ports, and um, from that Alessium, you just get this piece of Ethernet cable, and you just have to connect uh, to some kind of uh, DC 5 volt. And that's it. By the way, the whole case is really light and it's not, as you see, it's not so big and um, it's uh, some kind of heatsink is running on the side, but I'm telling you guys, this is so cold, so it's not uh, uh, eating uh, too much power. And uh, so what's happened with the Copperland? 
the air ADHC is transfer everything which is MIDI signal to the Ethernet and uh, here you can see everything which is blue cable this is my uh, copper LAN network and uh, under my table you see I have to switch because one is just driving the the copper LAN and the other this is my uh, normal uh, internet switch and that's it the other air 88 is sitting here Ta -da! so i have two pieces from that lsum air 88 c and the two together is actually is cheaper than to buy two piece of uh, midi interface for a computer and you really not uh, get this uh, freedom so I'm really happy with that. Now I have a possibility to drive 16 MIDI input and 16 MIDI output, which each one can drive 16 MIDI channel. So now the possibilities, what I get with the, with the copper LAN, psh, it's almost endless. So let's jump now to the copper LAN setup because if you just install the, the copper LAN interface into your uh, sequencer, in, in my case it's a Roland MV8800, it, it's not meaning it's automatically will work. So you have to work a bit on a copper LAN to, to make your presets and um, store it. So let's jump now and um, let's see what's going on. Uh, at the moment I, I did for you guys uh, simply I just disconnect everything from, from everywhere and this is where you can see um, the, the Roland MV8800 and uh, my synth which is sitting on my left hand and uh, the other uh, synth which is sitting on my right hand. So now the MV8800 it has as you see one MIDI input and two MIDI output and um, this is what we can use to connect all of my synths and all of my keyboards into the Roland MV8800. By the way, uh, the, the Copeland is not detecting the, the devices where you, where you install it, so you have to come to the, um, to the even into the overview or in uh, edit mode you have to come here and you have to, to make uh, the renaming because later on if you have more uh, Copperlan uh, uh, Alessium Alex uh, interface or, or whatever it can be really like a mess so uh, this is what I did so I renamed uh, the, the Alex to MV8800 and here is my left scenes and everywhere um, in the ports I also did a renaming, renaming, you see, um, I have uh, already set up every port on my AL88C. Uh, for example, here I have a DX7, CZ1, GD800, GX10, uh, IMU 4, 4XD, uh, Hollywood Gold, uh, or whatever, and on the other side, and on the other side, I have uh, the, the Sirius, the Virus, the Supernova, uh, the Jama, AN, AN, uh, 1X, uh, and whatever. So, okay, now I don't have uh, any connection to, to nowhere. So, this is what I call in my snapshot like a zero configuration. And uh, now we will do. Uh, the the MV8800 as, as a center of all of my MIDI gear. So it's so simple. You have to come to the connect and uh, start from. Doesn't matter what you are choosing, but uh, in, in my Roland MV8800, I already uh, made um, like a, 
uh, start uh, zero project to, to, to mapping everything to my MIDI B port. So let's jump to here to the separate streams. This is really handy because in a real world you almost cannot do that. Uh, let me show you w w what I mean. So now I will tell to the Roland MV8800 everything which is coming out from the channel 1 of the port B it has to be go to the right since Sirius channel 1 N nothing fancy but here on the channel 2 I can add other synth on the same port so Let's add more, so let's add all of my scenes what I have. Okay. Add, add more, Supernova channel 1. So on uh, MV port B channel 5, we'll go <coughs> to my Jama AN1X. And so on and so on. So let's add everything what I have. Good. So now, if I'm coming to the overview, I have to see now the Roland MV8800 is driving my two side all of the scenes. Okay, so what about the master keyboard? For the master keyboard, I really like to use the Roland GD800 because it has a very nice uh, keyboard and uh, it's also very uh, responsible on, on the aftertouch and on the on the, the velocity so in in my case I will choose the GD800 as the master keyboard how I can do that it's very simple um, the GD800 is sitting on my left uh, side so I came here and from the GD800 output I will connect the channel 1 to the Roland MV8800 MIDI in channel 1 because in my setup the Roland MV8800 it's accept the channel 1 input as a master keyboard. So now, when everything is set up, tada, let's see. Don't worry, it's not meaning we will get some kind of closed loop like what the MV send to the scenes and uh, which is what is coming from the GD800 will go inside into the MV and again and again. No, it will not do because the, um, on a GD800 I have a MIDI through port and uh, 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 the basic setup for the MIDI through handling in all of the Roland synths is meaning it will not repeat on the output ports what is coming into the input port so I don't have to, to worry about it. So let's now make a snapshot and here <clears throat> on this list you can see what connections the Copenland system is taken as a snapshot. Let's say OK and by the way, the Copeland is give this really weird uh, date and some numbers and blah blah blah, some minutes and seconds, but easily you can rename it. So let's rename it MV as my center. Not center, it's center. Center. Good. So now I have this uh, snapshot, and I know if I came in here to the overview. I know the Roland is the center and the right thing is just drive it and um, uh, one of the synth uh, which is in my case is the GD800 it will uh, 
came as my uh, master keyboard. But wait a sec, what about, uh, what about with, the, with the, the BPM signals and with the timing? Because we did a separate Mm, streams to the to the to the scenes is not meaning the clock and all time related comments and signals will go to your synthesizer. For example, uh, uh, the Sirius and the virus and the, and the, the, the novation it can uh, handle and support the, the BPM signals, so it's uh, all the arpeggiator and all the, the uh, tempo-related uh, things can drive it with, uh, with, uh, with the master clock. So here you have to add a listener for a, for a clock source. So now, in my case, the MV8800 will be the clock source. So let's add listeners. That's why uh, I also have to send all the clocks um, yeah, sorry, I start with the DX7. So add the more left CZ1, CIS clock clock, left, and so on, and so on, and so on. Good. Now I'm done. And uh, let's see what's going on again. So again, uh, the Roland MV is driving all of my scenes and also sending the clock data to all of my scenes. So let's let's make sure how it looks. Good, still good. So let's take another snapshot. Make sure everything is set up. That's it. We finished with the Copeland setup. So let's now check if uh, if this is true or not. So now we will jump uh, to the Roland MV. Uh, I have a couple of uh, audio tracks and here is where the magic is starting because you see here I set it up all of my scenes and basically you have to to add um, the lines how many scenes you have and but for the future proof I also added uh, the, the empty ports so here you have to like uh, add the new MIDI track and whatever and uh, on the on here you have to click uh, to open the, the track uh, parameters and here you have to choose on which port, which channel your instrument for lis will listen for the MIDI commands. So as you see here, now on a B1, channel 1, I'm driving the Sirius. And so on and so on. For example, the virus, I'm driving on a MIDI B port, channel 2. and until the end, let's say, this is my last uh, instrument, uh, the EMU, it's driven on a, on a port B, channel 13. So let's close this, and as you see here, I, I just did in the in last couple of minutes some kind of uh, bubblegum uh, song. You see here, my first two beat, it's empty because the, the Sirius and um, also the Supernova, they, they are not react immediately on a BPM. So the, the Sirius need a bit of time to get uh, synchronized with, um, with the Roland MV8800.
and uh, maybe also with the uh, other uh, BPM source. So because of that, I did here two empty bar. Let's make sure all of my uh, BPM sensible um, gear um, can synchronize up. So now if I'm coming to the instrument and I press a pad on my pads, you have to uh, hear some kind of noise which is coming from the virus. Okay, so maybe some some old uh, aggressive setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with the virus, so with the virus, everything is everything is okay. So let's jump uh, to the super. No, no, it's uh, switched off. Sorry, the AN1X. It's also working, the CS6L, I think it's also in some kind of sequence. Okay, let's jump more, the DX7 is some kind of bass will be. The CZ1, also bass. The GX10, it's doing also something. So, as you see, what we did in a Copeland Manager, now everything is came to be worked. So let's make sure everything is working and do some noise and, and fun. So let's start play. So this is the synchronization time. And now I will... This is the, the MV8800 sound. So if I do a mute, nothing is coming out. So let's add the CZ1. really like <laughs> the DX7 and the CZ1, so nice. And if you did a good job with the, with the clock sending, the Sirius has to be synchronized totally. quick idea when I came in today into my studio to make this video for you guys. So let's see what's happened with the virus because the virus is also uh, synchronized to the clock. So let's solo it. This is the actual tone of the virus. And of course, we will make some fun with it. But now I arrived to some kind of problem because on a GD800, and if you remember, the GD800 now is the is the the master keyboard. On the GD800, I don't have the controls, which is good for the virus. So let's make now more trick. So in a normal scenario, maybe you, you don't want to use more uh, master keyboard, but in, in my case, we will use more than one master keyboard. So this is when the Copperlan protocol can come really handy, because in a normal world, you really cannot do like more than one keyboard as your main keyboard and uh, it's really not easy to, to switch uh, the devices, but here in a Copperland, now I can do something else. So let's, let me explain to you guys what was the problem. The virus, now if I switch off all of the nodes, you see I don't have any automation on the, on the controls, on the MIDI controls. So the virus 
If now I press the, the key on, on the GD800, it will drive the, the virus. But if I press the key on a virus, it's also will drive, but will not record it. And because of that, I cannot record the, the tweakings on a, on a MIDI controller, so what I have on the, on the virus. So for that trick, I have to connect the virus as my master keyboard. But wait a sec. It will anything will destroy if two keyboard will connect it to the same port on the same channel. In a normal life with the old uh, MIDI controllers, it can be really uh, froze up, but with the Copperland, I don't have any problem. So now, if, if I uh, come to the overview, you see now I have the GD800, which is running on that line, and uh, the virus is also came as a master keyboard. So now we will stay on a virus and we will do some kind of tweaking on the, um, on the, on the sound of the virus because I want to record the tweaking of, for example, the filters and the effects and whatever. So now let's make the, the virus a bit more powerful about uh, here on a 15 bar, but eh, okay, let's, let's start somewhere here. So we will jump back and uh, press, uh, I will press now the, the, the record. Okay, and we are staying on a virus. And if I press the play now, everything what I will play on the virus, it will be recorded to the virus. And also everything what I played on a GD800, this also will record to the virus. So let's see how it works. So now I press the play. record some other key presses on the GD800. So let's do a record and play. This is actually how it's going when I just have some kind of ideas and uh, I really I just want to record really uh, quickly so it doesn't matter what keyboard I choose for my master keyboard or even two or even more as my master keyboard I always can record everything so in like uh, half minutes of switching on the, the scenes, I can really start uh, to record my ideas. So here is the my fancy fancy drawing about the, the whole system. 
And here you can really understand how everything is, is going when I switch to the MV8800 as my uh, uh, central unit. It's actually it's so simple. Um, here I have one AR88C and here I have another one. And this side I call the left side and this uh, I call the right side. To the left side I have one, two, three, four, I don't know how many uh, synths is connected. And every synth is send the MIDI uh, signal to the AL and from the AL every synth is also connected and is true on the other side also. So all together I have 16 input and 16 output with these two uh, Alessium AL88C. So what's uh, going on with the, with the Copperland signals? Uh, in the Copperland uh, uh, manuals, you, you will read, they suggest you to, to make a total independent um, uh, network for a Copperland because uh, if you mix the Copperland signals with uh, uh, other kind of uh, TCP, IP and uh, uh, other uh, type of communication, it can be make a problem here because the copper LAN protocol is using a really low level of uh, communication on a, on a network, so it's not running by TCP IP and it's, it's not using this high level uh, transport uh, codes. So for that you have to do uh, a different network for a copper and this is the best way to do it and uh, you saw that uh, under my table this is actually my small uh, uh, HP uh, switch and uh, this is my other Freecom switch which is actually is just uh, connected to the, the internet and uh, to my uh, uh, file servers and um, from that I get um, internet to my mobile and to my iPad or whatever and um, here to this switch I just connected the Roland MV, this small computer where I can uh, make a modification in a Copeland and uh, my DOS system and uh, that's it. And, and you see here everything above that is just uh, the Copeland and everything under it is it's everything internet. So what's happened if <clears throat> So what's happened if I load up this MV Center snapshot for the Copperland system? It's meaning everything which is coming from the MV, including uh, machine control uh, commands and, uh, and tempo signals and time signals and whatever and all the notes. It's coming uh, to the Copperland uh, cloud, and from the Copperland, I can choose by these uh, the snapshots uh, where each signal is going. So now, in this case, you see, I just send the, the time uh, signals and the notes to, to here to, to these scenes, and also is through on, on that side. So, for example, the, the for example, the virus. It's, it's get, the, it's get the, the notes and get the, the, the stop uh, start uh, signal and also the, the time, uh, the BPM signals. And uh, for example, my effects, what you can see here, I did uh, a kind of chaining because I don't want to lose uh, more ports from the AL88C and the, uh, mainly my effects just need a time signal to to get the tempo, for example, the, the delay, my uh, tape delay, it's really tight uh, when, when, uh, when I drive with, uh, with the tempo of, of the uh, Roland MV. So what's happened now when all the dough is switched off? Nothing, because uh, the dough don't need to deal and send data and receive data or whatever. And, uh, but parallelly, I can use my Tascam mixer and uh, my other uh, master keyboard, which is one innovation, I don't know, M MK2 or what. From the Tascam, 
I have a USB connection to my DAW system and I also have a normal MIDI connection into my uh, AL88C and because of that I can use the Tuscan mixer to send automation uh, signals or parameters via the MIDI into the Roland MV. So let's switch now everything to the DAW. In, in that case I have uh, uh, other snapshot which is meaning everything which is coming from the DAW it's sended to the all of my synth including the MIDI time codes and in this setup I switched off uh, the MV as uh, my um, time uh, signal master and I just have to do a really simple trick in the Roland MV. I have to come into the um, setup and I have to say no you are slave you are not a master and also you can do more tricks for example what if uh, you made a bass line here on the MV or on your DAW, you made a bass line and you want to drive two, three, four, even five different scenes with the total same notes. So you can imagine what can happen if I drive the DX7 and the CZ1 and for example the GX10 with the total same bass line it's almost endless possibilities. What about the, the, the VSTs? Um, in, in normal case, not in my case, most of your VSTs you run in your main DAW computer. But uh, what if you want to drive the, your VST with, with other sequencer or other uh, keyboard? It's again so simple. You have to connect uh, your MIDI source into your uh, DAW computer via Copperland and uh, here in the, in a, in a computers by Copperland you have I don't remember maybe 24 uh, Copperland port you can uh, you can install on a computer so it's meaning you can load up here 200 pieces of different VST and uh, you can drive the, the VSTs from your real gears uh, any direction so this is uh, this is one possibility the other possibility the, with the VSTs it's uh, in my case I keep one computer which is only uh, hosting a couple of my favorite VSTs why because I'm mainly using uh, the reason uh, DAW system and the reason is not uh, VST compatible so what uh, what I did uh, from the reason via Copella I driving my VST server and from my VST server I have a couple of uh, uh, audio analog outputs and digital outputs which is connected back to the mixer so with this solution I don't have to open here the reason and for example the, um, the, uh, the Cubase together and make this, uh, I forgot the name, and uh, make this um, uh, connection between the two software, I really can do easily uh, one MIDI um, track for my VST server and I can run uh, the VSTs from my uh, Reason DAW system. So, as you see, the possibilities almost endless with the Copperlan because you really can switch everything to everything. You can really make a cloning, you can really uh, easily can make uh, uh, time synchronization and, and so on, so on, so on. Let's uh, finish the song. So let's jump uh, to the beginning. Let's. Uh, play a bit with the mixer so let's start from the beginning and now I can play here with uh, with my mixer uh, to to make uh, the variations and of course because this mixer it's uh, MIDI drive and it can act as a MIDI um, mixer I also can record all these movements 
to my DAW or to my uh, MVAD 800 because it's uh, so simple to do. I don't want to go no into the into the details, but so let's uh, press the play and uh, record the idea how it should be. Well, let's start with the CZ one. video. I hope you guys enjoyed everything about uh, Roland MV and about the Copperland protocol and about uh, Alessium AL88C interfaces. And uh, I really, I have to say, if you are thinking on change all of your MIDI um, interfaces to Copperland, don't hesitate. You see this uh, protocol is so open and so flexible. You can do almost whatever you want to do and uh, the possibilities are almost endless and uh, really for example in my case the Copperland it's helped me a lot to to make this really quick just came into the studio and then play with my favorite uh, instruments and then on the next day change everything to the uh, DAW centered uh, operation so really I cannot say more uh, about it and in this video, sorry guys, I don't want to go deeply into the settings and I don't want to show you everything because if I'm doing that, uh, this video will be five or six uh, hours long. And if you have comments or questions about this video and about the, the Copperland and how I did the, all this setup in my studio, don't hesitate, just left uh, your words here in the comments in, in the YouTube and uh, I will reply it. So thank you guys to watch me again. I hope you guys enjoyed. So see you next time. Bye.